like in Bill and Ted, just going to bring there it back it is. to those legacy <laughs> listeners. What was funny about that movie? Nothing. Like, and JJ was oh, beside himself. It was like he got kicked in the giggles and just couldn't stop. Dude, I, I don't know. I was waiting for it. Yeah, I knew it was coming too. Welcome to the What's Our Verdict podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic Judge and Jerry. My name is JJ Crowder. I'm here with my co hosts, Matt and Heiner. Better red than dead. And Alec Burgess. Let's get it. We appreciate your help going on the podcast. Go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button. Tell a friend about us. Go check out our website, whatsoverdict.com, where you can listen to all of our episodes, sign up for our newsletter to get exclusive content and updates, interact with us, pick up some merchandise, all of those fun things that people do. Also, and very important because it's a good cause, Pod Chasers Review for Reviews for Good is back. So if you go to podchaser.com during the month of April, you can leave a review on our podcast. And it's for any podcast. So if you listen to other podcasts, go do it for them as well. But for us, leave a review on our podcast on Podchaser during the month of April, and it will be donated a certain amount of money to World Central Kitchens. That's a chefs for Ukraine is what they're doing. So to help out with that fantastic cause, make sure that people are able to eat in this current time of need for them. So and then as we receive these reviews, we'll be notified on Podchaser and we can go in and reply. And if we reply, which we will, they'll double that donation. So there it is. Do we have a goal for that donation? Like $15 in Mass and Where's address? Ooh, that's a lot of reviews because I think it's only like a quarter of a review. So 50 cents Ooh. total after a review. So let's say... I mean, I'll put on a dress for the cause if we get to a respectable number. Yeah, I mean, let's say, okay, so what? At 50 cents, it would take 100 reviews to get like five bucks, right? Or is it 10 reviews? 10 get? reviews. Fuck, see, that's why I don't do math. That's why I host the podcast, well, to get ladies to $15, and gentlemen. we would need 30 reviews and responses. I don't know, Matt, and what would it take for you to put on a dress for a spoiler-free or the first spoiler free. We can get 30 reviews. I mean, I'll put on a dress and we'll post it on social media or we'll all wear it in our next spoiler free. I don't care. Whatever we want to do. I'm game. Cool. Interesting. I almost volunteered to shave my beard and then I'm... That's what happened, so. <laughs> uh, no, we can... If we get 100 reviews, JJ will shave his beard. Sold. I got a big family. Got 100 <laughs> reviews. You and heard I'll it shave here first. Beard. You want to see baby face JJ in our next spoiler free? I don't even know. I got to be honest because I don't even know what that looks like. And I've known the man I don't even know if for, JJ knows what that looks like. He's forgotten. Not for a long ass time. We need to up the ante, JJ. We need to understand like how long has it really been since you've been like 20? Well, you know, because you were there 2018, 2018, because it was when my nephew and oh, after my yeah. freaking head and face with my beard trimmer while I was in, on a nap on the couch. That's right. I don't even, yeah. I've repressed that memory. It yeah. didn't, it wasn't JJ. It's an odd fucking thing. Like, yeah, yeah, my two-year-old, that's a great story. My two-year-old nephew, he saw me trimming my beard. and was like, what are you doing? I was like, my face needs a haircut. And he thought that was the cutest thing. He was like two years old, three years old, something like that. And then... I fell asleep like on the couch. You didn't finish, Uncle JJ? Yeah, I fell asleep <laughs> on the couch. And, like, my hair was pretty long at the time on my head. And he walked up. And, you know, those stupid phone fake ones that you see on, like, TikTok where they're like, yeah, and, like, people freak out. Yeah, he did that only with my beard trimmer on zero right up the middle of my head. <laughs> so I had to fucking shave my whole head down to, like, a level I one. Remember that. And he got my one side of my cheek before I actually realized what was going on. So I had to, yeah, I had to shave everything. Like it, it was the weirdest. I hadn't been that hairless on my head and especially my face since I was in high school. I so think. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, we can get a hundred with 30 reviews. I'll wear a dress. I mean, that's like fine, but this a hundred review mark if, to see JJ basically Bright and shiny with his his rosy cheeks, his little chinny chin <laughs> that I haven't seen in years. Like this could mean something to all of us. Yeah, I mean it's been four years, and the world would be a better place with the donations that were put forth to a good cause. Exactly, exactly, and causing JJ embarrassment as well as me. But I don't feel that embarrassed. It'd be funny to see JJ. I hate shaving my face. Like, 
Alec, I feel like we need a happy medium there, like 50 or 60. You got you to throw something in. All right. What do you guys want? Mm. Cut his man bun. <laughs> Cut the hair. That's rough. <laughs> no, that's... JJ's will come back in like... How long will it take to come back, JJ? Like two six weeks? weeks? Uh, two, two weeks. Yeah, see. Two, three weeks. Let's think on that. But pending, yeah. Alec will have... Uh, bring it up at the end of the podcast. Think through this while you guys are, you yeah. know, shitting on this movie and then exactly. bring it back at the end and we'll, we'll figure it out. Exactly. We'll, ooh, we'll make Alec watch She Dies Tomorrow. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, I like that a lot. <laughs> okay. The okay. worst <laughs> movie I've ever seen. I can like we stream it. that so we can get the full experience as oh, we yeah. suffer through? Oh, yeah. How well, long is it? Two hours? An hour and it's a half. not a long It's movie. like an hour and 24 minutes. It's a very I quick do movie. That. Yeah, we'll, we'll. You think you can? Yeah, it's rough. We can live stream it and I'll discuss my yeah, thoughts exactly. and feelings. Exactly. As I, I won't be. I'll be on the stream, but I won't be giving it a watch. I'll yeah, just be no, watching. Because we'll, we'll we'll run a watch party, but Alec will be the only one watching that. Turd. Except when <laughs> JJ will be fully uh, awake when they are talking about dolphin sex. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that shit's the only good part of that movie. It's a fucking weird movie. Anyway, so there it is. At thirty, Matt's gonna wear a dress on our next spoiler free. At 60, Alec will live stream watching She Dies tomorrow. And then at 100 reviews, I will shave my beard. Why did I just agree so Look, get your, get your friends involved. Get your family involved. For those of you that do listen to us on a dedicated basis, thank you yes. for doing that. For one, you common folk, we support you. But if you want to have a good laugh, all you got to do is get some people to come drop some reviews, including yourself. Mm-hmm. If you want to just walk up to random people on the street and say you want a good laugh, here's what you need to do. I mean, go for it. Yep. Podchaser.com. What's our verdict? Movies or TV? Either one. I don't care. Leave a review. Okay. So all that said, we appreciate the help with that and look forward to all the consequences. But to our podcast, the question we always ask is if you ever find yourself wondering if you spend the time, money, or both on a movie, to help with that question, each week we put a movie on trial, discuss the facts, pass judgment, and let you know our verdict. Today we're reviewing The Lost City. It was released March 25th, 2022. It was written by Oren Uziel and Dana Fox. It was directed by Aaron and Adam Nee. It stars Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, Daniel Radcliffe, Divine Joy Randolph, and Brad Pitt. A reclusive romance novelist on a book tour where the cover model gets swept up in a kidnapping attempt that lands up both in a cutthroat jungle adventure. If you haven't seen this movie and you want to avoid spoilers, go check out our spoiler-free review on YouTube to see if you should even watch this movie. Or if you know you're going to watch it, pause now, go watch the movie, come back, pick up where you left off, because we're about to spoil the shit out of this thing. Yeah, let's talk The Lost City. Look, I did not have high expectations going into this movie. I talked about it in the last episode of our podcast. I was not looking forward to this. The previews made me just like, no, uh, why are we doing this again? Like, I think I tried to get out of this movie at least a dozen times, and it just didn't work in my head because I know people are going to see it because it's Sandra Bullock, it's Channing Tatum. Oh, you know they're going. They're, they're yeah. All the, what, Red Notice with Ryan Reynolds and The Rock, like movies like that, Star yeah. Powers at some point carry the day. Absolutely. But you would be mistaken if you think you're going to see something worth watching because they're in this movie. Like, this is a classic Sandra Bullock turd. I love Sandra Bullock. I think she's amazing. She's one of my favorite actresses out there. But she's not afraid to make a shitty movie. <laughs> and this one is up there, man. Like, what was it's that other movie? Because like- I can only think of good. I, I think of The Blind Spot. I think of The Proposal. Blind Side. Blind, yeah, blind, side, blind, side. Not blind Spot. Sorry, my apologies. I, w- give me some turd movies that I'm just not recalling. All About Steve. Speed 2. I mean... Look, Miss Congeniality was funny. Miss Congeniality 2 was not funny. She did a really bad movie called Forces of Nature with Ben Affleck. I think that's probably about it. The net was pretty bad. Now I know. Yeah, she did some terrible How old movies. is she, by the way? She's getting up there. I think she's in her she 50s. like 50? Yeah, I think she's born in 1964, so whatever that math is. No way. 48. Is it really only 48? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be 58. Dude, she's 57. She turns 58 in July. Wow. She looks fantastic. Yeah, she, whoever is doing her Botox <laughs> is doing it right. That's right. But yeah, this was not a good showing for her. And look, Channing Tatum, 
this is probably unpopular opinion here. I don't think he was ever as good as he was made out to be. I think the only movie that I was seriously impressed by him in was Foxcatcher. I don't know. I like Jane Tatum when he's in a supporting role, um, like Free Guy, where he's got a kind of a side part where he's able to play off of somebody else in the screen. Because the scenes he shared with Brad Pitt, where he kind of relegated back to a side character, were hilarious. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Go to sleep. That's fair. <laughs> Slaps That's the guy. You're saying he needs I, I, small doses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, you know, just kind of come in, do his thing, play off of everybody else in the scene, which is something that he's, I think he's really good at being the kind of that supporting role. But as far as a leading actor goes, I don't think that's kind of his niche. He has the body for a leading actor, but he doesn't have the kind of acting chops to back it up. He's a bigger, dumber Ryan Reynolds. But they have the same kind of dry comedy when they deliver lines. Ryan Reynolds just does it better. Well, and I think, but more consistently, yes. I just don't think like he has the chops. I don't know, and that's judgmental of me. I just don't enjoy Channing Tatum that much. Like, I don't look back over his series of movies, and but I, he also does comedy that I don't usually find very funny. Like Twenty One Jump Street, <laughs> did not enjoy that movie. Like, I can't fucking handle that. I movie. love that movie. I hate it. <laughs> Fuck, I hate it. That movie's okay, but then, I mean, are we, we should be coming back to, to JJ's level of humor, which is somewhat confusing at times because he'll it's laugh like a laugh. little kid at things that, like in Bill and Ted, just going to bring there it back it is. to those legacy <laughs> listeners. What was funny about that movie? Nothing. Like, it, and JJ was oh, beside himself. It was like he got kicked in the giggles and just couldn't stop. Dude. I, I don't know. I was how waiting to, for it. Yeah, I knew it was coming too. As soon as I started I was talking waiting about for it, and humor, there it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dead. I don't have time in this podcast to explain this. Maybe we'll have to do an episode uh, of nothing but let's describe different forms of comedy. I don't like fucking uncomfortably forced comedy, like over the top. And I realize that in your mind, that's Bill and Ted. But Bill and Ted has such fucking subtle ass humor underneath the forced bullshit that that's what makes me laugh. This movie, 21 Jump Street, those forced comedy, like where it's just like, let's throw, let's take everything that could be funny and fucking throw it against the wall and somebody's going to laugh at it. Like that's to me what this slapstick bullshit. And that's Alex's favorite type of comedy. So I'm going to laugh. I'm that <laughs> sucker. I love it. <laughs> but I, yeah, just, I won't disagree with what you just said there. Yeah. I mean, that's fair, but I just think like Bill and Ted was such uncomplexly dumb. Didn't make any sense humor. That I, don't, I mean, I feel like I need to write a book report on it, but I'm not going to watch it again. <laughs> well, and I mean, part of Bill and Ted, especially the new one, is the, the nostalgia effect, right? Like, because the original Bill and Ted for me, I mean, it was my childhood, right? Like that shit was hilarious when I was young. So for me, there's mm-hmm. carryover from how much I enjoyed those first two films. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I realized that that's not, there's a level there for me that's different than most coming into that movie. But this movie I did not find funny. And that's like, I tried, like there were parts like Brad Pitt fucking coming in being a badass. That shit was hilarious. Like the over the top shit. Like I loved his part. Like I was like, I want more Brad in this Mm -hmm. movie. Like I think if you would have switched their roles, like it would have been a better movie, put Brad Pitt in Channing Tatum's role. And this would have been a better movie. To me. Well, why did they have to, if they didn't have to kill him, I would have been fine with them doing their thing all together, at least for a longer period of time. That's actually one of my critiques of the movie. I'm like, if Brad Pitt was in there for at least another 20 to 30 minutes, it would have been more enjoyable for me because the parts that they were all together, I quite liked it. It was good, but that was only what, like 10 minutes? Yeah. Less. Well, he's a better dash than Alan was. You can't have a better dash come (laughs) upstage or cover model. I brought you some cheese. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that line had to be laughing so hard Dude. <laughs> and I love how cheese in the jungle has got to taste so bad <laughs> oh it's got to be so I, I growing up I actually didn't really like string cheese because by the time you'd have it for lunch unless you had like you know like oh, your little stop. freeze pack it would be like kind of lukewarm and slimy just could never, and it could never do it but now like if it's cold I do like string cheese but it's got it like I have to eat it like as soon as I take it out of the fridge yeah 
Oh, definitely. I can tell you what I did not like about this movie. What's that? And that was Abigail Fairfax. Daniel Radcliffe, I feel, is a much better stage actor than he is on film. And the way he delivers his film performances are as if he was on stage. So he's got like all the, all the movements going and the way he enunciates and his diction and everything like that is all from his stage background. And it just does not fit when you put him on camera. Some people can do both and they do it very well. I don't think he can. I think he's more of a, a stage performer. And he should just stick to doing stage productions and leave the bad guy stuff to, you know, Antonio Banderas. Well, oh, but that name was hilarious. That would have been <laughs> fantastic with Antonio Banderas. Is this? See, we just needed to recast this movie altogether. Like, that's all it was. It was I think there was a lot of bad casting choices. What's our verdict? Casting could be yeah. a future. I mean, I rewrite movies all the fucking time. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So whenever he was on the screen, I was like, uh, just well, I don't like Daniel Radcliffe in a lot of film. Yeah. Well, and I said it in the spoiler free, I feel like he, I didn't like that character in Now You See Me Too. So when you step it up a notch, like, and he's just not believable. And I think that at the core of this is what my biggest issue with this movie was, is the things that I should believe in and would make this movie interesting. I don't believe in them. Like the love story between these two was like a fucking slog. Like, at the end of it, like, they kiss, and then I'm like, oh, God, that's gross. Like, it just didn't work for me because there was no – they didn't earn that shit to me because, like, there was one serious moment where it was there was some sexual tension. Like, when she's putting on the weird face masks on his <laughs> eczema on his back, which I was like, Jesus, this is weird. And she's saying which, how she would write it. Like, I was like, okay, there's a little sexy time in there. It's a little tension And that was the only time that I was like, okay. To me, it was just like this young, infatuated stalker almost that was like chasing this older woman, which I appreciate. I would chase Sandra Bullock too, goddammit. But she wasn't into it until like the very end. And then I'm like, okay, so you laid in a fucking tomb with this dude and now you like him. Like, come on. I just didn't believe it. And so the rest of it just didn't work for me at all. And it's the same with Daniel Radcliffe. I just don't believe him as a bad guy. He's just this petulant child with thugs. And if you're going to give him thugs, give him some thugs that are scary. Not some dude that hits the perfect snipe shot on Brad Pitt and then can't hit the fucking broadside of a barn (laughs) for the next 20 minutes. (laughs) that's just bothered me so much i'm like you can't just be that accurate and then when the same the other two people one of them's in a chair in the car not moving at all you could just kill her right away can't kill her she's the way you find the the crown of fire or whatever it was that that just that stuff makes (laughs) they could have killed brad pitt in a different way that didn't have to be so stupid after that to not shoot a guy wearing a white like hoodie in the middle of a green jungle. Like does it's not that hard. And he's like twice the size of a normal human being. Yeah. Clearly you two have never read a romance novel. <laughs> I don't know the, the sexual tension escalation from chapter one to chapter five, but I know at the, some point there's some throbbing. Yeah. Yeah. You can't use throbbing in chapter one. That's like chapter four, chapter five material. Okay. I won't lie. That conversation made me giggle a little bit. And the other thing that made me laugh. So I will say that the one redeeming scene in this movie that I like literally laughed out loud at was after they're being chased by these guys on the motorcycle. And when they cause a crash and they go off the side of the cliff, the two of them back and forth trying to justify the fact that these two people just died because of them. Like I fucking laughed my ass off at that part of the the first guy, but the second guy could have moved. (laughs) Yeah, like, that was his fault. <laughs> that back and forth really made me laugh because like I can see someone, a couple of people doing that being like, oh shit, we just killed some people, but I don't want to feel like that was our fault. So let's talk about the fact. So that made me, other than Brad Pitt, was like the one redeeming It's funny you say because I actually quality. hated that scene. Did you? It went too long. Like if they had cut it by like 10 seconds, I think I would have liked it more, but they kept going with them. Like, all right, like we could have stopped like five jokes ago. Sure. But I was glad they didn't because it was the only thing I found funny besides Brad Pitt. (laughs) Did you not find any part about the the leeches funny? No, not a little. And part of that is because I'd seen it 35 fucking times in the previews. And the other part of that was that to me is the epitome. Like the leeches at first 
could have been funny. The part they show on the trailer where he's kind of losing it and gagging, but then the whole fucking giant dick comedy, like I was like, that's not okay. They completely lost me when he turned around. I don't even think women do they really romance like, novel. Like, yeah, oh sure. <laughs> I mean like yeah. Dinglings are not beautiful. Uh Channing Tatum was a stripper, so if anybody's got a good looking one, it's Channing Tatum. Probably. And I'm sure he's got a fucking law. That was the joke. But when he turns around it, but it's like she said the same shit like 17 times. Like I would have just been like big eyes would have been funny and like uh okay. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I need. Now, that would have been funny, that subtle hint towards it. But the whole, like, you know, you just don't know, and then you think you know, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. Mm-hmm. Come on. Was that Channing Tatum's ass, or did they have an ass model stepping for that scene? Who knows? If I had to guess, it's probably his ass, because I doubt he's shy he's about showing his tight. ass. Yeah. Good job, Channing. Yeah, good for him. That's America's ass. Dude, if I had an ass like that, I'd <laughs> fucking walk around I'd naked too. Off. more. And I mean, I walk around naked with my lack of ass, so I don't... I'm not going to remember you just said that, and let's keep moving. <laughs> That's for a thousand. I hope that makes though. it into the intro. A thousand reviews. I don't want us to get there. <laughs> don't make that happen, America. Brad said it'll shut off our pod chaser at 999. <laughs> shut that shit down. Or India. or I mean, we are international, so I should stop Fair. saying America. That's Don't fair. make that happen, world. <laughs> I also really liked, who was it? Her PR coordinator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Divine Joy Randolph or Joy, something like Yeah, that. Divine Joy Randolph was the actress. And I can't remember. I thought she was hilarious. Um, I did not like really the cargo plane trope oh, where you've got the crazy cargo guy who's got a goat. Yeah. Because I feel like that's in just about every movie ever. It's kind of overplayed, but I like her and yeah. her character and her role. She was hilarious. Sure. Yeah, that other guy made no sense. I was like, we didn't need that. Honestly, with her, I wish did I wanted her to go off more to like lose her shiz on those two policemen, especially and just be like berate somebody. That was the only thing I was missing with her. I just wanted her to like lose it. Come back tomorrow. We're closed. Yeah. I did laugh. I was like, yes. Like during her little go off moment, like that whole, like, I want someone to massage my shoulders and my feet at the same time. And I know logistically that doesn't make any sense. And then I did love at the end, like that they made it happen for, like she's laying on that beach and Oscar Nunez, the actor walks up and is like, I got you both. And she goes, you are my platonic Something or other. He goes, I like that word. Platonic man. Yeah. But I felt like putting Oscar Nunez, and I think he's funny as fuck, but like it just felt like, oh, he was in the proposal and people liked him. So we're going to force him into this movie. I didn't love that as much as I love him. Yeah. He was not funny with the goats. No, he's, he's weird and awkward. They probably needed to put a sheep in for the goat. Could have been better. Yeah. And you know who I didn't, who else I didn't like is that fucking assistant like the social media oh yeah no god she and that character annoyed the shit out of me i was like let's go what? talk about what war you lived through grandma yeah oh, it's so <laughs> bad well then i was laughing because she kept putting like the hashtags that were that had nothing to do with like what was it like the boy band or some Sean shit Mendes or something yeah, Sean yeah. Mendes, that's what it was Hashtag Sean gotta get Mendes. that algorithm jj i know i know i'm the worst at social media and like i mean i've learned more about it than i ever want to having a podcast but that's why i let mattson handle most of that shit i just post the shit that he tells me to <laughs> <laughs> JJ, we can't post your ass on social media. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, ladies. Only and fans. What, what's our verdict? Only fans. You should apologize for not showing my ass like that. <laughs> <laughs> that should always. I mean, be. If, we're, if we're worried about seeing his two cheeks on his face, two cheeks on the booty. I don't know. Good I don't girl. even know if I have much else to say <laughs> on this movie. That it was just kind of a movie spliced together of a random moment. So the, the scene in the. The tomb, I guess it's got to be on the, the crowbar thing. Yeah, they may have been able to prop it up, but then to push that back with their hands, you're never getting out of that. Like you're no. you're there, you're dead, it's over. They didn't even attempt to use the legs. I don't think I was like, oh yeah, Sandra Bullock's really going to be helping move that like 5,000 ton. Yeah, they're dead. Yeah. 
Well, and they barely moved it when they were standing and had all the leverage in the world. This dude, like that is a move where you're using nothing but arms. Like you're never moving that same. No, you're dead. Lid by pulling that. So I, yeah, it just, the movie was so ridiculous in so many ways. Like, God, it was so hard to watch. And even Casey, like I kept looking at Casey when we were watching it and she just was like looking at this movie wide eyed, like what in the fuck are we watching? Like, <laughs> and it was so interesting because she, again, she's like me. She loves shit. Sandra Bullock. She actually likes Channing Tatum. And so like watching this movie with her, we walked out and she's like, sometimes I hate you for the movies I have to watch for your podcast. And I just started laughing. I was like, dude, I get it. Like this was sometimes I hate myself for the movies I have to watch for the podcast. And this was one of them. I keep trying to think of things that redeemed the movie, and I just can't think of many outside of Brad Pitt. But they ruined it. The worst part was the kiss at the end, like this weird back and forth shit about him, like the novel, like him writing like her, and he goes right to throbbing. Like that conversation was kind of funny, like the throbbing and like all the words he was throwing out. But then they kissed, and I was kind of like, vomit in my mouth a little bit because they just didn't earn it like it felt so forced and the fact that he's that. 41 and she's 57 no i'm all i'm all for that like dude i'm 41 and i would definitely go for a 57 year old sandra bullock like no shame in that game at all for me that didn't bother me in the least it's just that there was no believability to that relationship so yeah i love sandra bullock but sometimes she makes some stinking shitty heard movies and this is one of them all right let's go ahead and rate this thing then uh if this is your first time listening to us here at what's our verdict we rate movies on a five point scale zero to five zero being just absolute garbage five being the perfect movie so to speak with that i'll jump in and review this movie guys i was perfect movie. i literally walked out of the movie theater and told casey i didn't think i would ever score another movie a zero I think I might have to on this movie. And then I've convinced myself not to give it a zero because I think back on Moonfall, the only movie I've ever given a zero, and there's no fucking redeeming qualities to this movie, to that movie. This movie, there was a couple of lines of dialogue that I giggled at. Brad Pitt saved the first five minutes of, or for like 10 minutes of this movie that he was in, if it was even that long. There were some redeeming qualities-ish to this movie, not the least of which being the fact that it was just Sandra Bullock's fun to watch. So I dealt with it. So uh, am I going to give it a zero? No. Is it really bad? Yes. I'm going to give it a one, and that's a stretch. But I didn't enjoy this movie. Go watch anything else. That Okay, not anything else. Because... <laughs> Oh. Hey, drop us a, what do we say? How many reviews do we have to get for Alec? Uh, 60 reviews. 60, yeah. 60. And he'll watch She Dies Tomorrow, the worst movie I've ever seen. Yeah. You watched I'll find Moon- something good in it. You watched Moonfall, didn't you, Alec? Yes. Yes, yeah, okay. I did. See, I can't force that one, but yeah, we won. She Dies Tomorrow is fucking terrible. Moonfall is more entertaining than She Dies Tomorrow. I didn't think so. I was so mad at that movie. Anyway, that's, yeah, go listen to that. It's too review. long. Fuck, that movie sucked. Anyway, I'm giving it a one. I'll never watch it again. In fact, I hope that it never leaves my lips again if I can avoid it. With that, Matson, what about you, buddy? Yeah, it's pretty clear, cut and dry. I was going to give it a one as well. Nothing special about it. Way better rom-coms out there. Way better combinations of a, a guy-girl chemistry, I think, in, in many others. Like Fever Pitch, for instance, with Drew Barrymore and things like that. I don't know. There's nothing redeemable about this movie. If they had kept Brad Pitt in it for longer, maybe I would have liked this movie. I, well, I can't even say it. I would have liked this movie a lot more. Uh, I think I could have done it. Daniel Radcliffe, he's just a crazy bad guy that doesn't have enough depth there. Like an Antonio Banderas, if we had recast, this also could have affected this movie in a positive way. There just wasn't enough there. It felt kind of mashed together, a movie that had star power and that people will go see and may enjoy, but... Yeah, it's just not a good movie. So I'll never watch it again, have no desire, and that's that. All right, Alec, bring us home. All right, so one plus one equals two, and I'm going to go two and a half middle of the road movie. I don't know what you guys are over there complaining about. I mean, yes, this is not a you know phenomenal movie. I really enjoyed it, though. I mean, 
for the first little bit, I kind of got pulled out as soon as we meet Abigail Fairfax. But I'm like, hello with that name, right? But as it kind of keeps going, I realized that this was just a, a crummy romance novel put into film form. And once that kind of became clear, I enjoyed the the film a lot more. So it's a two and a half from me, middle of the road movie. Put it on for some background noise. Watch it once on a first date. So, you know, get the practice with the one single man tear going down your face. That'll get you some points. But yeah, I mean, you want to watch this on a first date when... They have like a 30 second scene talking about the dude's dick. If you're ready for that in your first date, like go for it. But I don't know if that's the right messaging you want to send. That's exactly the right message you want to send. Lay your cards out on the table. Um, But I I think it was a middle of the road movie. Like a big old Jabba juice. (laughs) Oh, man. Um, So yeah, two and a half for me. I might watch it again here and there, but I liked it. I like keeping us... Keeping you honest, stay, man. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> sure. Stay where JJ and I are out here trying to save you, common folk. Uh, yeah, but you uh, guys had fun talking about this movie. I could see it. Dude, you I guys, always have fun you, talking <laughs> movies with you guys because that shit's hilarious. You guys were ready to give it zeros when we first started. I got you up to one by the no, end. No, I was not going to give this movie a zero. Not even close. <laughs> oh, I was close. But it had nothing to do with you. It was the fact that I kept comparing. Moonfall saved this fucking movie. Hall- fucking Sandra Bullock goes Halle Berry, a fucking thank you card. Because, you know, what's our verdict is about to ruin this fucking movie for the world if she hadn't fucking made Moonfall. Yeah. This, mm, anyway, there it is. Oh, and what was the, the Hang on. I got to go back because there was a joke. <laughs> That fucking hurt my soul that I just thought of. Like, the fact that they kept calling it the Lost City of D. And then there was, like, some <laughs> joke about... Romance novel. God. Romance novel, JJ. I know, but it was so <laughs> bad. At least the romance novels commit to their really shitty sexual tension. And they don't make jokes like the Lost City of D. And, like, somebody's going to give her the D. Like, I was like, oh, my God, this is fucking terrible. Anyway, now we're moving on from the Lost City Next week, probably going to be just as shitty Morbius, but hoping against hope that at least there's something we're naming about Morbius. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I know. Massive, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? After this movie, if you still want to listen to us, you know where to find us. What's our verdict.com. Anywhere you want to listen to podcasts, we can be found. New logo, a new face. Pretty crazy. Thank you all for the two plus years that you put in. Don't forget to, to donate to Pod Chaser. 30 reviews, you'll get to see me in a dress. 60 reviews, we get Alec to watch the worst rated movie of all time from us. She dies tomorrow. And if we somehow make it to a miraculous 100 donations slash reviews, JJ will shave his beard and we'll do it live. He will shave live. Yeah, I'll stream it. Why not? That's that weird. we're not if we get there i mean maybe i'll just hire some overseas company for like <laughs> 100 dummy work there you go <laughs> pretty funny look so fucker, if i'm people. reviewing the goddamn computer somewhere from fucking yeah some bot i'm gonna be pissed because i gotta i gotta skynet that's, exactly i'm, I'm, I'm calling skynet because i gotta reply to all these reviews and then shave my beard fuck i like it oh yeah definitely go pod chaser leave a review Get those donations in from Podchaser to a very good cause. With that, as always, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Cinemagic out.